Hello there, this is Cyril. Take two. I was trying to record something. I want to talk about something that I hope will be talked about more in our uh, community of uh, covert narcissistic abuse education. Um, I'm not a therapist or a doctor or a psychiatrist, but I'm doing much research on... uh, the uh, experiences I had in my life and how they're still affecting me today. I had a life experience uh, yesterday in group therapy at uh, intensive outpatient. And um, the man used something called vague language on me. Um, A very uh, disturbing, very uh, sneaky technique where he uh, attacked me but tried not to look like he was attacking me. And um, I asked a question. I asked uh, GPT a question yesterday. Um, about it. And um, I was very disturbed about it. Very upset. Almost to the point where I wanted to uh, end it again. And um, I was able to control that impulse because I knew better than to do it. I also know that suicide is a sin. And um, I also know that it's a permanent solution to a problem that could pass, that could be overcome. And um, this gentleman in therapy, uh, this client... uh, got frustrated or was bored ironically about um, the previous group therapy that talked about kindness and um, he got bored by it and I was the one who was talking the most in the group because I could relate to it the most yesterday and um, the therapist was asking everybody if they had any input on it and since no one else did I, uh, it might have looked to an observer like I had the whole floor, but it wasn't because I demanded it, and it wasn't because, uh, anyone told me to, it was because I, I spoke from my heart, and I spoke from my mind, and I spoke from my spirit, and it felt like God was, uh, pulling it out of me, and I'm going to talk about God, if you don't believe, that's all right, um, you can interpret this from, you know, maybe an atheist, uh, standpoint, you know, you can say, uh, you know, she, uh, talked from, uh, you know, the part of, part of her that's, uh, higher, and we all have that, we all have a higher self, and we all have a lower self, so, uh, without further ado, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, read the question myself, um, I was going to have AI read it, to you, but uh, I think I'm going to read it myself. I'm full of energy now. The question is, I asked AI, was give an example of how a covert abuser uses vague language to criticize someone. He said, I was domineering. Is, is, quote, she was domineering an example? Is this vague language? Also, this was made, this was made, The statement was made in front of a crowd of people, in front of 15 other people in the group. This was done in group therapy session. He did this in front of uh, all the other clients that were also in that group the previous hour about kindness. And by the way, they weren't talking a whole lot in that group either, and they weren't talking a lot in this group where he was in the second group criticizing indirectly. I was indirectly accused of being domineering in group with this method by another client, with the vague vague language method. None of the other clients defended me, and the therapist was very bewildered and kept asking, asking the client, What do you mean by that, sir? What do you mean she was domineering? But the client just kept saying, I don't know, she was domineering. She took, they, they took up the whole, uh, they took up the whole group. In fact, he did by correction, he didn't say she. He said, he said, uh, they. So, I didn't know for sure. I couldn't have a case in, uh, defending that he was talking about me. 
but it really felt like it because uh, I was the only one there who was talking in the previous group. No one else volunteered to talk about it. And um, the therapist had no obje- therapist then um, had no objection to me talking. So uh, who was I to just, you know, what's the body to do? Was I supposed to just sit there and, and shut up and let, let the therapist be nice and boring and, and dominating? And by the way, she wasn't. You know, she wasn't boring at all, but maybe she was boring to to him or to them. And maybe I was too. I don't know. But um, he kept on repeating himself and saying, you're domineering. They were also looking right at me. That was interesting. Now, uh, people can say, maybe he was looking past you, but he could have lo- he could have looked at the therapist when he was talking. You know, he could have looked around the room. When I talk in group, I try and look around the room at, at all the people. And um, even if I'm scared to look at the people's faces, I learned a trick when I, when I used to sing. Um, look at the back of the room. Look, look above their heads and uh, kind of keep your eyes level so it looks like you're looking at them. But you don't have to make eye contact necessarily. I make sure I do that. But I don't know. He was, he was looking at me. And I just felt this really icky feeling crawling over me. You know, like, you know, a tarantula crawling, creepy, humiliated. And I asked AI, can this even drive a person to end it? I'm not going to end it, but I've heard of this happening to other people. I've heard of people ending it because they were bullied this way at school by other kids. And they're, you know, bullied, you know, in the light of Pride Month. Bullied because, you know, because they're uh, gay. Because they're LGBTQ. Here is AI's answer. Covert abuse, according to uh, IASK.AI. Covert abuse and vague language. Covert abusers use vague language to criticize someone as a manipulative tactic to undermine their target without being overtly confrontational. In the scenario you described, the statement... They were domineering is indeed an example of vague language that can be used by a covert abuser. By using ambiguous terms like domineering, the abuser creates doubt and confusion, making it challenging for others to challenge or defend against the accusation. Impact. In a group therapy setting... Sorry about that. My alarm went off. Disregard. That's my calendar. In a group therapy setting, such... Covert tactics can be particularly damaging as they are often subtle and insidious. When another client indirectly accuses you of being a domineering in front of the group, it can lead to feelings of humiliation, isolation, and powerlessness. And indeed it did. Hopefully only for a few hours, though. It could have lasted a few days. In my experience. The lack of immediate defense from other group members, bystander syndrome I call it, can further exacerbate these negative emotions. And I did. I felt alone. Man, I... The story of my life. Someone attacks me and no one effing stands up for me. I feel even more like the bad person. Potential psychological impact. While you mentioned that you are not about to end it, it is crucial to acknowledge that experiences of covert abuse... Especially in vulnerable settings, how ironic, like group therapy, can have severe psychological consequences for individuals. The emotional distress caused by public humiliation and feeling uh, unfairly targeted can indeed lead some individuals to contemplate ending it as a way to escape the pain and shame inflicted upon them. It is essential to seek support. If you're in the United States, call 988. If you're in another country, please search. You're on the internet already. Please search crisis help in my country. I searched it myself. There are resources. It is essential to seek support from mental health professionals or trusted individuals if you are experiencing distress due to covert abuse or any form of emotional manipulation. And this is one, you guys. If you went through something similar or went through this kind of thing, remember your feelings are valid. There are resources available to you to navigate through such challenging situations. And AI got this from Psychology Today, National Domestic Violence Hotline, and American Psychological Association. So it's not just in thin air. 
you know, I got this from some resources. I looked these up myself yesterday because I was pretty upset. And um, you guys can do that. And um, you can feel free to w- listen to my uh, podcasts, uh, my, my struggle with mental illness and navigating life and society. Mental Health Ethics and Social Health and Ideals Church of Universal Ethics, which is my church within. Um, I encourage you to see yourself the way the way God sees you. And if you don't, and if you don't know what that means, get a relationship with God as you understand God. If you don't believe, you can... Uh, I, I, I've, I've been creative about this. Um, see the wor- Let's see. See yourself and others as God sees you. Okay, uh, a secular version of that. I can search that into AI. I've asked AI, what does that mean in secular terms? I'll even uh, help you. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Okay, I'm waiting waiting for AI to uh, answer this question. Please restate in a secular version the phrase, see yourself as you see another see yourself and another as the way the way God sees you. Viewing yourself from another person's perspective is a way to gain insight into how you are perceived. Okay, hold on. I uh, I wrote it wrong. I think Google has a really nice habit of uh, misinterpreting me on the microphone. Please restate in a secular version the phrase, See yourself and others the way God sees you. Okay. This is for the person who doesn't believe in God. I believe in God, but I realize other people, others don't. Restating the phrase in a secular version. To view yourself and others with the same level of understanding, empathy, and acceptance that you would expect from a higher power or an all-knowing entity. Or, um, if your heart is broken right now, do you remember when your heart wasn't broken? Or do you remember uh, ever feeling safe or ever feeling loved or ever feeling imaginative and creative, such as maybe when you were a child? Go, go there right now and see yourself and see other people on the, on the planet as beautiful beings deserving of kindness. And if you still think that's boring, I encourage you to examine your own broken heart, your own frustration, your own pain. Please don't be like like that guy was to me yesterday. And don't end up like me either. Alright? We can control our unkind impulses. We can control our self-destructive and ending impulses. We can do it. I, I had to attempt to stop doing it the hard way a long time ago. Because I was really in despair. And that was how I ended up accepting the Lord Jesus Christ two years ago. Because I was in dark dark, dark, dark despair. I thought there was only evil here. I thought there was only the devil. I thought there was only lust. I thought there was only, I thought the the, the best that people wanted in the world was anything that wasn't boring. Can you imagine what the world would be like if it was, if it were always interesting? I think we would be overstimulated. I truly believe we would both be, we would all be overstimulated so much we would burn out even faster. I can't believe that's what you want to have happen here. I don't want it. Ooh, that's going to kill us. I mean, imagine everything being interesting all the time. Let's get boring and think about kindness, please. Please.